Welcome to Black People Love Paramore, a podcast where we try to make Black people feel seen. Please rate us and write us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Five stars only because we are five star bitches. We're to Yo Gotti. I'm your host, Sequoia. And joining me today to talk about Selena Quintanilla, we have Kat from Oso oh Afro. Kat, you want to tell the people a little bit about yourself, a little bit about Oso oh Afro? Hey, everybody. Yes, I'm Kat, the founder and curator behind Oso oh Afro. Uh platform for the people, by the people, a BIPOC community to basically just get us together every week, every month, every so, whatever, just to build that space for us that we need. I love that. We love safe spaces, building spaces. That's what we're about here. So we appreciate that yes. over your way too. Now, Y'all, before we get into talking about Selena, we have our first segment in my defense. In my defense is a segment where we bring one of our controversial opinions and defend it for you all. Kat, do you have an in my defense this week? You know, I had a couple that I was going through. And honestly, it's hard to pick between all three because I just feel like they're all something. Three? Yeah, that could be talked about. But I just got to say, I'm going to keep it simple this time. And then we'll talk about <laughs> other things throughout. Um, so my unpopular opinion this week is, you know, I kind of don't really mind a little pineapple on a pizza. And I'm going to say that because I feel like a lot of people find that extremely controversial. A lot of people talk about it all the time. They get so angry. They feel like they could define you as a person based off of that choice. I'm not saying I do it all the time. Maybe I won't order it necessarily, but somebody orders it like a little pineapple, no, no bacon, no pork, you know, I'll, I'll eat it, you know, I'll eat it. And it's, and I stand by my choice. So yeah. Who's going to be my ass? Nobody. Nope. That's the whole thing. <laughs> All right. So, so, yeah, no, pineapple on pizza is not bad. I can't help that some of you are tasteless. I can't help that. So you I'm know, sorry. Some people really just want <laughs> cheese, which is sad. It's OK. Kat, I, I don't know if you know this about me. You don't. I don't like cheese. I don't eat cheese. In any capacity. So generally, oh, except for like baked cheeses, which okay. is weird. But anyways. Okay. But like on a pizza, I or always order it without cheese on it. Okay. And I load it up with toppings and you don't even miss it. So I will definitely put pineapple on my little pizza. That's fine because you don't eat cheese and a lot of people don't eat dairy. I'm not really supposed to eat it like that. So, oops. But all right. So <laughs> then my next question to you would be then, what, do you, what are the toppings? We have to talk about this now. So I do still be on that pork. I'm not going to front. So I will put... <laughs> put some pepperonis on it. Okay. I'll put some sausage, some uh, red onion, black olive, mm -hmm. pineapple, a little chili flakes. Okay, so you are with the pineapple crew. Yeah, no, I'm with okay, the pineapple crew perfect. 100%. I'll even throw a little honey on it sometimes. That's controversial too. I know that's controversial. There we go. Girl. I love that though. I love that because that shows me you got taste. Like your palate is evolved. Like you can do more than just the regular degla smegler. It shows me that you're a leader in your community. Period. I'm just saying, like, you're not afraid to think outside the box. And I love that for you. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, let's be for real. Right. Let's be fucking for real. So <laughs> I definitely feel you on your pineapple and pizza. I'll have it. And, and I'm happy that you put yourself out there. That's brave. That's really brave of you. The way that people act, that's very brave of you. Yeah, that was, I mean, honestly, that was quite light. That was quite light for... <laughs> For the conversation. No, I could have went deep. Yeah, that I could have went deeper, but you know, I didn't want to make this like a whole a thing today. You know, that's not what we're here for. So let's just, you know. Hey, we as deep as you want to go. If you want to keep it light, <laughs> you keep it light. If you want to keep it deep, you you do what you want to do. Mine this week is light to me. Okay. But so I I, I don't know how people are gonna feel about this. Y'all not gonna like this. So I watched a very classic. Mm, like teen, early 2000s movie for the first time. Ooh. And I didn't like it. I did not like said movie. And before I say I which movie it is, I just want to preface it by saying, I just want to preface it by saying, I didn't like it because I felt that the protagonist was boring and not interesting. And she had no grit to her. Like mm. she was not, um, she had no friction. Like, she was just super, super fucking nice. And I was like, I okay. hate it here. The movie in question is Legally Blonde. 
That's valid. I watched it for the first time That's and valid. I was like, Elle Woods not doing nothing. I watched it for the first time on a plane mm-hmm. because it was one of those movies that everybody's always like, oh, oh my God, Sequoia, why, you haven't yeah, seen you Legally have Blonde? It. It's, you have to watch it. It's right up your alley. You love Mean Girls. You love Clueless. You like, you know, bring it on. All the movies of that time, right. you would definitely like Legally Blonde. I didn't like it. Do y'all know me? My favorite thing <laughs> is, like, my, my favorite thing is a villain. I love a villain. And yeah. the villain in that was not a strong villain. And she had no villain qualities. I love a protagonist with villain qualities. And I love an actual villain. And mm. all of it was missing. And I'm like, okay, I'm just bored. I was, I struggled to get through the movie. It just didn't hit like that for me. Let's be honest. When that movie came out, we was all pretty young. And the, o- the only thing we really liked about that movie was the fact that you know, they had the whole bend and snap action thing going on. That mm-hmm. was very strong Is that back right? then. And then also the fact that she wore pink. But if you can take out those two things, what does it really give? What does it what really does, give? Because the really fashion have? was cute. It, it was right. Her fashion cute. was cute. I'll yeah. give you that. I did enjoy watching the fashion, but everything else I'm like... <sighs> Y'all really was not y'all like, but you know what? It's fair. Sometimes you just miss the boat. You, miss you know, it. like if I had seen it at nine, mm-hmm. I might've liked it. But at 28, I don't like it. No. I didn't like it like that. So. Yeah. And that's valid too, because I'm going back at, for example, <laughs> girl, Twilight, let's talk about it real quick. Oh my. I'm sorry. I had it's to. It's so had to. bad, Kat. It's so bad. As somebody that was one of the fans that I did camp out when they had um, Breaking Dawn. I did go and I sat there with my little friends and our little (laughs) t-shirts, listening to music, dancing with the other people there, making friends. Okay, we had the reactions in the crowd together at the same time. We hugged each other, we laughed each other, and we cried. Cried, yep. But let's just be for real. Looking back at it now, as somebody that is a grown adult... (laughs) Right. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, I'll be cracking up at the lines. You're like my own personally. What did he say? You're like my Please. own personal brand of heroin. Like, he was. Oh my like, god, he honestly, did say that to if, her. If this movie, if those movies would have came out now, it would be extremely problematic. A hundred percent. We'd be like, this is assault. Something about this is assault. Like, something about this is wrong. The power dynamic is incorrect. It was definitely giving like- <laughs> Joe from you vibes. And we was all like, oh my god. He gosh, was giving no! scary stalker vibes. <laughs> no, that's so I was such a twi heart too. I'm just, I'm just yep. saying, I just had to bring that up just because there are a lot of things that, like you said, we do miss the boat. Yeah, yeah. Cause if I watched Twilight for the first time at 28, I'd be like, this is literally the worst thing I've ever like, seen in my what life. What was we thinking? Right. But it was it really hit at 14, 14, 13. Oh, hey, that shit smashed. And if you ask me now, like I'm still riding for it. Don't get me wrong, but I know what it is now. You know, okay, so are you team? Were you team Edward or team Jacob? Which one? Which one had your heart? I'm just gonna say, do it. I feel like I, I know with certain things I'd be real wishy washy. <laughs> that's fair. No, I that's fair. Wishy washy, just because I see things from all sides. So like Jacob had a very valid point. Like Bella, what are you doing? Like you doing all these things. And he's getting these feelings and you know that and you're using him for it. So his, 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 his emotions was valid. And then she was dead wrong. Edward was dead wrong on a lot of things. He was very stalkerish, overbearing. Like a lot of what Jacob was saying was true. So I was like, okay, Jacob. And then Jacob was fine. You know, I was young and I was like, oh my gosh, he is so fine. Then yeah, yeah. I'm also team Edward because of the Collins. Like, but is that also really like a reason to be team Edward? I mean, I feel like Team Edward leaves you very little option. You know, when I was just reading the books when I was young, I was like, I like them both. I was also real wish- wishy-washy. <laughs> I had a hard time. I was like, fuck. I love Jacob. I love Edward. Like, I don't know. And then when the films came out, I didn't like Taylor Lautner that much. And so I was like, Team Edward. And so that's how I that, yeah, hard flew into Team Edward. Yeah, I was like, I'm not impressed. Yeah, I don't like the portrayal. But also, if we're being realistic, Bella was dead wrong. I'm team anybody but Bella because she was using fucking Jacob. Like you said, she knew she knew that Jacob she was catching was all these feelings. She knew. she knew. And she knew that she wanted Edward and she didn't really want Jacob like that and would just like the attention. Play on my man. So I was like, team anybody but you, girl I don't even like you. She was a city girl before we knew what the you. term was. Let's just be honest. And was. And was. And was. Wow. Wow. So that's certainly that. <laughs> okay. Let's move to the second segment, Song of the Week. Mm-hmm. Do you want to start off with a song? It could be any song. 
And I'm just going to say right now, I'm not even saying that because I'm on this podcast, but let's just be honest, as the number one Haley Williams fan right now and Paramore fan, I'm just going to say, you already know, this is why. Like, we really got Black music back. Let's talk about it. Like, we really got Black music back. I'm not even holding you. My friend, he was like, (laughs) we were on the phone talking about it. He was like, friend, I'm not going to lie. Haley Williams is my new favorite Black girl in America, and he's from the UK. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, (laughs) yo. That's my new favorite Black American girl. Wow. Like, that for me is giving everything. And plus, she said what I feel. I, I feel like she's, they said what we feel like as grown adults now that listen to Paramore when we was young. Like, this is right. why we don't leave the house. This, they evolved with us. This is yeah. why I don't leave the yeah. house. Yeah. Well, like, you're right, because I really don't believe in the house that much no more. I love where I live. <sighs> I love my I love my space. I love my peace. I love the house. I got yep. all the stuff I need in my house. Where am I going? <laughs> Where, I got my cat there. Like, what are we doing? So why this is why I don't leave the house? Because every time I do, there'd be shenanigans. Like, what for? Right. It's too many shenanigans. And you know what? This is why I don't leave the house. It's such a black thing to say. <laughs> like, like to, in response to some bullshit happening, see, this is why I don't leave the house. This is why I don't this be outside. Don't like, that this is why I don't be here. so right. This is, why I don't, this is why I don't even be doing shit like this. Exactly. Haley Williams know what she's doing. That's she, what I'm she, saying. She know. They she know. know. They literally have a chokehold on the black community because they be understanding what we be saying, what we be going through. What we, what we, they understand. They get the lingo. They get it. No, they're they're here. And it doesn't feel like pandering. It's it, just it here. It's just aligned. It yeah. And then all the memes from on uh Twitter. <laughs> all of them be having me. Twitter so. gonna make a meme. Twitter gonna make a meme. Especially with Paramore, Twitter gonna do it for him every time. Okay, my song of the week this week is in honor of Selena, Como La Flor. A classic. Cause that's that's how I learned how to speak Spanish, you know? I don't speak Spanish, but that's how I learned how to speak how to speak the very little Spanish that I can is from Como La Flor. That was the song. No, that le- that legit was the song. Everybody knew it. Everybody was singing it. We was all super young. Didn't understand the lyrics at all, but we sung it with you our chest. You know people was mumbling. We sung it with our chest from the back of our throat, too. Like, we had it. We pushed it all the way out. A hundred percent, straight, straight out the chest, and I still do. To be honest, come on, La Flor, come on. That's it's so good. She leaves you no option. She, she, she honestly left you no option. And her voice was just so beautiful. It's actually outstanding. Like when I was watching the movie, I watched the movie a couple yesterday in preparation for this podcast. Again, I've seen the movie a bunch of times, but I'm like, damn. Even as a kid, they're they're saying that like. The voice was giving. They're saying she even as it. a kid, right, with like no real formal training mm-hmm. like that. Like just incredible. I like it. Just literally, yeah. That girl, you can't some people are it girls, some people are not. And, and she know, decided it seems to be an it girl, you know? It is what it is, right. Okay, so let's get into it because I have a lot to say on <laughs> <laughs> I she said I have thoughts and feelings. Okay. Okay. Let me just give a brief little synopsis of who Selena is, just in case some of y'all don't know. If you're listening to this podcast, you know good and goddamn well who Selena is, but just in case you do not, Selena Quintanilla Perez was an acclaimed American Tejano musician and is regularly regarded as one of the most influential musicians, one of the most influential musicians of the late 20th century. She rose to public prominence and fame in the late 1980s and 90s. She was murdered by the president of her fan club, Yolanda Salvador, in 1995. She was only 23 years old. Mm -mm -mm. If you think back at that, that's so sad because she was so young. So young. Like, 23 is a baby. Like, literally a baby. Yeah. After you go through it, you're you're way older now. Like, I'm almost close to 30. And then you're like, damn, 20? That is young. So I remember you, growing up, we used to think 25 was like, that was the time that you had to have it together by. Yeah. And then I got 25. I was like, damn, this is it? Like, I don't got my life together. Like, I don't have... Right. What, like, what's going on? Yeah. So that's just all to say, like, 23 was extremely young, but was she the impact that she had on everybody was just crazy. And still to this day. Even still to this day, uh, a couple years ago, Sierra dressed up as Selena for Halloween. You remember that? 
And I was like, damn. the and, and everybody knew exactly who she was upon seeing Sierra. It wasn't like a confused, like, because it was such an iconic look. Like Selena's looks were so iconic, so recognizable that how long has it been? Close to 30 years later, it's still so iconic and so recognizable. Yeah. And still making stuff about her. Like she had a... um a MAC lipstick collab come out in like Mm -hmm. 2020. She had that Netflix series come out in last year, I want to say. It's just consistent social relevance Mm -hmm. even 30 years post. But you know, even that's controversial. Like a lot of people, you you know, a lot of people are saying like that it's wrong that her family keeps doing these things to profit off Mm -hmm. of her. And they're saying that it's to keep her memory alive. And so it's kind of like, which which one do we lean more into? You know what I mean? Because um, I understand wanting to keep somebody's memory alive. And I definitely respect that. And you miss them so much. They were taken from you so suddenly. I get it. But at the same time, it's like, at what point are you willing to let them rest? Let them rest. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely feel that for sure. Okay, so what is your yeah? What's your, what's your thoughts? What's your? I would love to hear some of your thoughts. I have some questions for you, but you can go ahead and and tell me your thoughts. So let's talk about this lip liner situation really quick, because you know people started talking. That's you know that's where a lot of people are talking about Selena right now as well, because we all know she was a queen. She had she had her lips together, lined with the eyebrow Easily. pencil. You know that's how they did it back in the day. Line with the eyebrow pen- pencil and with the gloss, you know, a little something cute on top. Nothing else. That's all you need. Um, and it's no secret, you know, that the Caucasian community does profit <laughs> off of the backs of the rest of us, predominantly the black and brown communities. And in recent news, as you know, uh, Miss Haley. Bieber came in and tried to come with this new lip wave trend. What's it called? The brown gloss lips? The brownie glazed glazed lips? lips. Yes. Ooh, the newest fad of the day. As if it's something we haven't been doing for ages. Like, shut the hell. Like, are you joking? Is this a joke or are you being for real? You know they being for real. Like, you're being fucking for real. And that really blows me. (laughs) They're being so serious. Like, this is the next big thing. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she was like, when she came out with that, she was like, yo, let me trademark this real quick. Let me figure out, you know, how I can put this in a bottle. She better fucking Well, she, yeah, now I'm just saying, you know how people think of stuff and they're like, okay, well, let's let's get this together. Let's profit off of this. Like brownie glazed lips, like as in a lip liner with a gloss on top of it. All of us have, literally all of us have been doing that. How do you even, uh, ooh, yeah. no. I have to bring that up because, you know, that's the biggest piece of tea right now. Yeah, the Hispanic and Latin community is very upset. <laughs> Extremely. Like, e- everything that mm-hmm. I see on all socials right now, anytime I'm scrolling, like, everything is referring to that brownie gloss lip. And they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, all the memes are hilarious. They really dragged her on this one. And it was valid in this case. A hundred percent. Not only that, Hailey Bieber has had some real questionable internet comments pop back up, too. You know, she's a, a part of the hijack crew. <laughs> She's part of the hijack crew. That's what I call them in my in my head. A hundred percent. No, a hundred percent. Now, now that she's aligned with them, she is part of them. Right. There's certain people that I group together. Like it might be controversial. Of course it's controversial, but but there's certain people that I group together that always do certain things. And at a certain point, you start to realize like, is this on purpose just so that they can get people looking at them? Or do they believe it? And then that that becomes like a mental health issue. You know, so a hundred percent. I'm like, ooh, clout is a disease for real. Cause y'all be grasping at straws trying to get some attention. It's actually a lot. It's kind it's of embarrassing. Lot. Yeah, hard to watch. What's your favorite Selena song? Okay, so I had a couple. Uh definitely Como La Flor is the like a big one. But fall in love for me. <sighs> That one, I it actually makes me cry. Even when I was a kid, I remember being like, 
Mm. Yes, I remember crying. You know that scene in the movie where she's like in the booth and she's just singing her heart out. Yeah. And I was like, you I remember just crying. Like, oh my, gosh. my mom was like, shut up. And I was like, oh my gosh. I know, so I can't believe you cry like this over a movie. Yes, mom. It's not a movie. It really did happen. And I don't know. And that moment also, because you also know the history. And so during that time, that was when she also really wanted to make like her American album. To me, that was like a symbol of like one of her dreams that she's always wanted to do. And she finally was stepping into like herself and her power and taking back what she wanted to do instead of listening to what other people wanted her to do. Yeah. So for me, like that moment, especially for her, like, I well, she's not here for me to ask her, but just from what I perceive, that was like more than just the song. You know, that represented so much yeah. more. And so for me, it's just like, oh my gosh, she had this thing. And yeah. I know. That album came out after she passed, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's like, it gives me chills just thinking about it. Like, oh, she really wanted that crossover album. She was so close to getting right. it. And then literally... she did, but she did get it. She just wasn't there to witness it. Speaking of not there to see it, she's not there because of one particular woman named Yolanda. And I saw on Twitter that Yolanda is eligible for parole in 2025. She is. And um, everyone knows that they've been waiting. They've been waiting for her to get out. That's that's sad to say. (laughs) Right. It's true. And it's also, I mean, honestly, I'm just a little surprised that she lasted all this time in there because, uh, not to be whatever, but we all know that when stuff be going down, people don't be making it out, you know, like. Right. And she's in Texas, right? Isn't she in jail in Texas, which is where Selena's from? I think it's, yeah, she's in Texas. I, I don't, like, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know either, but I really suggest that Miss Mama stay where she at. I think, I think it would be in her best interest. Uh, I'm saying because word on the block, like, I, like it's. <laughs> I be on socials and uh, every time I scroll, it's always there's some stuff that be popping up about her and they be ready. I'm telling you, they got the heat for Miss Yolanda. They be making fighting like stances like, oh, this time I'm going to be when she come out. Like they're going to be waiting for her at the door. Like they're going to be waiting for her outside. Like I think they really going to have to have like high profile security around her so that she could get out. And you know, she ain't got the money for all that. So like... I mean, or maybe she do. We don't That's know. That's true. Who knows what Yolanda been doing for the last 26, whatever, however many Cause, years. Because how she, how she been making it in the inside? I really don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, but people don't seem we to be playing about uh, Yolanda getting out of jail. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she can see social media, if she's aware that people haven't forgotten over the last 27 <laughs> years that she's still in hot water and should probably remain where she at for her safety. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Another thing I saw on Twitter, somebody said, (laughs) not somebody, Twitter user Sir Cam Carter said, somebody on Facebook said, Black people only know one Selena and her name is Jennifer Lopez. And that (laughs) shit is funny (laughs) to me. Because I do wonder how many Black people are like, oh no, I love Selena and they're actually talking about Jennifer Lopez. Especially younger ones. I mean, I imagine much younger ones that like are familiar with the movie, maybe solely, and that's about it, um, are like actually Jennifer Lopez things. Also, didn't realize Jennifer Lopez was not famous before that movie, like that. Yeah, like that's the thing that like blew her up. I didn't know that. You know, okay, so to go back a little bit, um, that is a valid point that you're bringing up. I didn't think about it like that before that a lot of people really didn't know her face. Right. They only saw <laughs> Jennifer Lopez and just think that that's... You know what it was? At that time, she really, like, they did a really good job at making her look like how she they looked. They did. She, she looked like her a lot. Yeah. Ooh, she... Hey, so say what you want about Jennifer, but the acting, she, she gonna act. She gonna act for you, for sure. Because she had Selena's whole vibe She down. had it together. Yeah, it was giving She had it together. Selena. She did. But you are right. That, that's the first time I thought about that because I know what Selena looks like, but a lot of people probably don't. They just think it's J-Lo. Because since then, there's just been the the series that came out and that's it. Mm-hmm. 
So really, right? People are like, "Oh, I love wow. Selena." They could, they could be talking about J Lo, but you know, people also could know what Selena looks like. I don't really know. I was born the year before Selena died, so I do have Selena's mental image. No, yeah, I mean, and this is a great segue too because there's a couple things. What? <laughs> so one is J Lo herself. Um, you know, she didn't really sing in the movie. Yes. Which is which is great, you know, because a lot of people know her for taking other people's voices. Mm-hmm. Just gonna say, you know, I'm not throwing shade. Right. I'm not throwing allegedly. It's, it's a known fact. You no, know, right? Yeah, uh, allegedly she takes other people's. Yeah, just allegedly she takes a bunch of different people's voices. Um, and she lip sings. Yep, namely Ashanti. Namely Ashanti. And she's been in the media lately because um, what's the song she did with a uh, when she was singing the she sung the N word, but it it wasn't really her singing, <laughs> and she had to claim a hundred percent. I told them something, my niggas, but they don't hear me though. Something me like though. that. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so when that song came out, I remember we was like young, dancing, whatever. We didn't even realize it, nope. and then now that we're older, so many things are coming out. And that's one thing that she just has to claim yep. because she doesn't she doesn't want to admit that like, oh, no, that wasn't me singing. Like, right. you can't publicly tell people all these years you weren't really singing right. like, and you have all this money from singing. Oh, my God. So what's funny to me is like she's offended at the implication that she can't sing. And that's odd to me. Like, so then, babe, what are you talking about? Why are you mad at us? Because you don't think you be lip singing. How If you can't sing, then go ahead and do that. And to this day, she has has she came out. And sung like Beyonce in front of everybody before she started a press conference. Hell no, right? <laughs> no. I, was just, I was just throwing it out there, like hell no. I mean, even even Leah Michelle's out here trying to read, like. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just saying she's proving. I'm just I'm using that as an example to to prove a point because right. you know when people be saying stuff that's not true, they come out there like Leah said. Well, you see these words right here. <laughs> I can read this, actually. Meanwhile, J-Lo said, yes, I can sing. Continues to lip sync. And she has yet to come out there. She has yet to do a video about her singing. Like, you know, like, just like a quick little snippet. Like, a two, a two, like a two bar. Something really cute, quick. something like for the girls. What you, what you want to, I mean, that's fair. You want to let's get loud and dance really hard. And that's super fair, because <laughs> it takes a lot to dance really hard. She can, she can dance. Right. So I'm going to give you I that. I for the dancing part. The dancing, absolutely. But the singing part? But like, and my question is like, do you need the singing part? Because again, we already know that you're taking people's vocals. Mm-hmm. I think one time she did try to sing live and it was bad. I don't remember, but I remember being like, girl, it was she so can't bad. fucking sing. Yeah. And it's like, do you need to sing? Because you already dance well. We say that you act well. Why is this so offensive to you that we're like, no, we, we don't, we don't really think you can, you have a vocal like that. We like the music. You know, you know what it is. I think is you know how you have a dream, you just hold on to it so dearly because it's something you always wanted to yeah. do. And everybody around you is telling you can't do it, yeah. and you don't want to believe them. Like you just want to hold on to it so bad. Like yeah. I can do this and prove everybody wrong. No, babe. I think this is her thing this that her she thing. needs to let go. She gotta let it go because she's not proving us wrong. Like she's a great actress. Like the movies, she has the romantic comedy scene. On lot. One hundred per- Oh my God, the rom com. Jennifer Lopez is rom com queen. If if there's somebody that needs to be married, getting married, right. needs to be with a partner, and she got it. You know, and she lives it in real life. Miss Mamden been married and, and and engaged 80 billion times. She lives her personal art. experience. So do you right personal experience? That's why you're so good at acting it. Like, I don't think that the music part is necessary. And I understand she keeps trying to come up with these songs. But I think it's time to pass the torch. Like, let's let it go. Give it up. And just, you know, continue producing, directing, you know, and staying in that lane. You know what? Exactly. And I think it's so funny that you mentioned that she probably didn't say the N-word on that song. She just can't fully come out and say that she didn't say it. Because I had never really thought about it until you said it. It's not her vocals. <laughs> she can't come out and be like, oh, actually, you guys, that was not even me singing. Ha. Like, okay, that's even worse. Like, lose, 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 lose. You can't lose, get out of lose. that one. <laughs> so can't. she can't get out of that she one. She can't get out of that one at all. I hate that for her. But back to the real Selena. 
you know, the original Selena. She mentioned that she uh, was influenced by people like Donna Summer and Paula Abdul. She has heavy R&B and disco influences in her music. And I think that's why Black people resonate with Selena so hard, because those genres are Black in particular. And it's familiar in a way that is not at all appropriative, you know? It's just like influenced by, naturally. Like, it's like, yeah, this is how she grew up. This is what she likes. And that comes across in her music, naturally. And it's fantastic. You know, honestly, we love people that don't forget where they came from. Yeah. We love people that can live in their authentic self, their most authentic self. Mm -hmm. And so when we get that, when we see that, we're like, we root so hard for that. And that's what she represented. Yeah. I read that she like, she was uh, curvier than other counterparts at that time. She was darker than other Mexican-American artists at that time that were also gaining prominence. Um, Her features were more indigenous than other artists, contemporary artists around the time. So she really did lean into being herself in a way that had not really yet been done. Actually, I think for a Mexican-American artist in general, yeah, I don't think that that had been done, period. It it hadn't been done yet. Yeah. And, and And she was out here doing it, not even really knowing Spanish like that. Like, And she was killing it in them interviews. And that's the thing that we loved about her. She owned it. Right. Like, she went to that interview like, listen, these are the five words that I know. We could make this work. Right. Let's go. <laughs> we are, we on, we on air in two seconds. All right, let's do what we got to do. Like, she just jumped in. Like, she wasn't like, <laughs> she wasn't trying to play like, oh, yeah, or bring an interpreter. Like, she was like, well, I got this. I'm going like, to use the five words like, and I'm going to just get it done. So, and that's what we love. A hundred percent. And I think that that level of authentic- authenticity as well as representation for other people in the Latinx diaspora that are in the United States and maybe didn't learn how to speak Spanish, that type of visible representation I'm imagining is important, you know? It's extremely Um, important. Yeah, because I've heard people talk about the shame that they felt about not being able to speak Spanish. Well, it's not even the the shame that you feel. It's, It's the shame that people put on you. And in a sense, like being shunned away from your own community. For not even knowing the language that people, like, that the people that, you know, you were around from your family didn't teach you. Or if they weren't around and you grew up with the other side of your family, like me, I'm half Black and half Honduran. I didn't grow up with the Honduran side of my family. All I know is how to be Black. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Even even though my my skin, people see me, my skin reflects the opposite narrative. And so a lot of times they just assume that, like, oh, so your dad was the black one, right? They would just assume like, oh, your dad's the black one, oh. right? Mm-hmm. And just and just assume, assume I grew up with my mom and like the Honduran side of my family. I'm like, no, my mom was black. Like, why does everybody keep assuming that my dad was black? <laughs> like, you know that other, you know. The other way know, exists too, could, right? Yeah. yeah. Dads could be other colors. Right, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, not every mixed race person that has a black parent has a black dad. A black dad, right? And so that's another thing. But going back to what he's talking about, it is a huge thing in the community. Like growing up, just with my mom's side of the family, even just being in school, like a lot of the Hispanic kids, the Latin kids, didn't want to be friends with me. They didn't want to because they didn't really know how to engage with me because all they spoke was Spanish unless they had to speak English in class. And I'm sitting there like, okay, what you saying? What you saying? What you saying? And don't like, don't get me wrong. I was trying to learn Spanish, but school Spanish is different from like your dialect Spanish, mm-hmm. like where your family came from, like, you know, and that's how other Spanish speakers could hear like where you're from right? or where your family's from. Uh-huh. And so I have all these different, I, I would think different dialects from learning Spanish in school because I didn't go to the same school. Um, Throughout all four years of high school or even just growing up, like when we had our uh, Spanish classes in middle school, like I didn't go to the same schools. And so, yeah, it's it's a whole thing. And even me being grown now. Well, basically, I I refound my family, my dad's side of the family. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I did. I remember like staying with them for a while and I was like asking, like, can you teach me Spanish? Like they would say one or two things, whatever. 
but it wasn't it wasn't like anything for me to go out there and be in the world and not still feel shunned or whatever. Right. And even to this day, like even if I go over there and be with them, it's like there are still certain things that you still don't feel a part of, whether mm. or not they realize that they're not including you. Mm. It still is like, oh, damn, like I'm still black. You know, mm. <laughs> there's right, nothing right, wrong with right, that. But it's right. just like there, there is an unspoken shame to it yeah you know what i mean and it it is forcing you like especially from your own community they're the biggest people that are going to do it to you so anybody that is mixed race that doesn't speak spanish and they are from a like their family is from a spanish speaking country Mm -hmm. you're gonna feel that Mm -hmm. you're gonna feel that especially if if you've never grown up around it you don't know the culture you don't know the history Mm -hmm. you don't know a lot of things and you're just kind of looking like oh yeah but I mean, as as I grew up, I was really like not into caring. <laughs> God, yeah, care. that, like got, anybody that I'm knows me it. knows I really don't care. <laughs> like I'd be like, I'd be like, um, say what you want about me, but at the end of the day, I'm really just a person that cares about other people. Mm-hmm. I could care less if you speak a language, don't speak a language. I'm just very inviting. That's the space that I develop for myself, and that's who I like to have around me. Yeah. And I feel like if you have that mindset, then you can kind of get out of that mindset that you hold yourself to um, when people do try to put you in that box and force shame you. Right. And like, you know, but it's it's a huge thing in the community. A hundred percent. It's yeah. a huge thing. It goes beyond even what I'm saying right now, and I've gotten into heated debates and big talk like big talks and Not topics debates. Uh-oh. girl it's sad i mean being being mixed not just with black or like hispanic latin um just anything you could be mixed with anything and if you're a mixed person growing up anywhere not just america mm-hmm. you, there's always going to be something mm-hmm. like i'm learning something new every day from different types of mixed people you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, why well, didn't know that blend existed? And then you go through this, this and that. And it's like, wow, you know? Yeah. No. And that seems to be true for like mixed race individuals, but also mixed ethnicity individuals. Like mm-hmm. um, you're both. And while Selena wasn't mixed race, she did have like a mixed identity uh, ethnicity wise. And it seems like she, in the movie at least, was echoing a lot of similar sentiments as to what you are referencing now. So it's always like that, mm, that like clash, push and pull type situation when there's more than one thing happening at once. Yeah. Mm. We can talk about that all day. So. I know. No, that's a, that's actually a really good topic. That is a very deep topic. It goes deep into more than just a language or skin color or hair texture. Mm-hmm. It it's really deep, deep into. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it before, but there's a like a saying in the the Hispanic community where they're trying to like better the race. Mejor la raza. Is that how you say it? Yeah, you got it. So that's a big topic of discussion, especially right now in this day and age where there's social media and so many people show their points of view and show their their different sides of themselves. But that's a huge one because it stems back from like old thinking. And that's a big portion why a lot of us feel the way that we did or do. And so... We're trying to change that. We're we're trying to break those, break off those ties of uh, backwards thinking in a way, yeah. and uh, try to be more positive about things. But there is a lot that needs to change. But it is more than just what I'm saying now. No, I definitely get that. Yeah, yeah. The you know what the world is real questionable, <laughs> uh, especially right now at this second. Is it's real bad? Mm-hmm. But yes, I've definitely heard of that saying. And the implications behind it, and naturally as an outsider, I do not know the full scope of how deep it goes or, you know, how nuanced the conversations can get or the arguments, Mm -hmm. both sides of it. I don't even, I don't even know what the sides of it are. But yeah, no, that's stressful, to say the least. I mean, to me, it's not stressful because, like I said, like, I just be living my life carefree. I don't care. I don't be caring. I be Very carefree like, black girl energy. I, Love it. Yeah. I mean, I have it's, I have to, especially because I don't look like the, I don't look like the typical, I would say, like, mixed person. 
Because a, a lot of people, when they see me, they they think that um, I'm black and white. Mm, I can see that. Okay. A lot of people don't assume, oh, maybe you might be like also Hispanic too. Mm. You know, it's like, oh, you must be black and white. Because growing up, like all the people that you went to in school that had maybe textured hair. Yeah. Like, it, it, well, it wouldn't be like this. Like the girls that were black and white had the curly, curly, curly hair. Right, 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 right. So when they would walk up to me, they'd be like, I know you're black, but like, what else are you? Like, I would get that all the time. What else? I'm like, I'm like, why are you just assuming I'm black? Like I am, right. but, you know, right. And so this whole thing, but that's just all to say that obviously I'm black. <laughs> I have an Afro. Right. The Afro was Afroing too. That's Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not the typical, it's not the typical hair texture that you would see on someone that is necessarily light skinned. Um, and so that is a whole nother discussion as well to get into. And a big thing that people, well, I didn't realize it until more recently, though, that up until I started showing how I did my hair, people thought that I was fluffing it out to get it this big and like trying to like, like picking it out. Yeah, act like I had a texture that I don't have. Interesting. You're like, no, this is how it grows out of my skin. Yeah, and that was like mm-hmm. crazy to me. I was like, oh my gosh, we nitpicking everything. Damn. For one, for one, but then for two, because I noticed that I follow like a lot of um like natural girls on Instagram and they have afros too. And I'd be like, oh hi, my my hair, my hair twin, you know, because I'm thinking like, oh, I found somebody with my hair texture. Right. And then I see that they have like this really curly hair and they just picking it to make it look big. Jesus. And I felt like from white chicks, the deception. Right. <laughs> the deception. <laughs> right. Get away right. from me, you jigaboo. <laughs> get, <it. laughs> get away from me, you jigaboo. I'm leaving. <laughs> I mean, that's how I felt. I felt like hurt. I'm like, damn. Like, right. You're shot. I'm out here struggling. My arm's falling off. Every right. week I'm doing my I know hair. your arm's falling off. You got a lot of hair no. coming off your head. It'd be falling off. But mm. that's all just to say, like, damn, I'm really thinking that these people is out here with this hair and they not. Or when they have or when they have the hair wigs, I like, oh my gosh, that's a ha-. you never saw it? Let me have an Afro hair wigs? Yes, that look like this. No. It it, it looks legit too. Like it don't even look no. fake. And then when they pull it off, I'm like shocked. I'm like, ah! <laughs> I thought you was a hair twin. I thought we was here. I thought you we had something. I thought right. we was like right here. Mm-mm. And Meanwhile, not. it's nothing. No. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a whole situation. But like I said, um, that that just goes to show like people can look different types of ways. And, you know, yeah. in this day and age of social media, everybody wants to tell you what you are, who you are, what you look yeah. like. Mm-hmm. Literally yesterday, I was watching this video. This guy, he stands in malls and do interviews with people. Mm-hmm. And uh, this woman he was doing an interview with read his shirt and his shirt said, yes. I'm black. Okay. But she was confused because the sweatshirt was black. And she was like, I'm a little bit confused on your message. She was like, are you referencing the color of your shirt? That's what she said. Yes, because he he looked like a white man with a little drop of some color. A little something. A little yeah. something mixed in but there. But when yeah. I was... when And then his... Uh, the way he speaks, it didn't typically come off as somebody that quote unquote would be be- black or mm-hmm. not black. Like mm-hmm. you, you can you don't you didn't get where he was coming from. Anything, right? You didn't get anything. And it voice. doesn't matter. But she was a woman, and she was like, um, "I just don't get your message." Because so basically, he had asked her, "Are you a BLM supporter?" And mm-hmm. she said yes. And he was like, "Okay, well, why do you support BLM?" And the only reason she could give was that it's a good cause to support. And then I think to deflect from the fact that she didn't really have an answer why, she was like, your sweatshirt's confusing to me. Oh, And it no. was like, why is it confusing? What's wrong she about the message? Right. Mm-hmm. It's straight yeah, he, he knew it. He knew it. <laughs> right. So he was letting her ride with it. Because he gets it all the time. Um, he said, and, let me let you talk. Yeah, and he did. And she was like, I don't get your message because your sweatshirt, like, are you trying to say that the sweatshirt's black or that you're black because you're not black? And she was like, are you black? And he was like, actually, in fact, I am black. And she was like, she kind of like shut up a little bit. Then she was like, oh, like, in which way? <laughs> oh, how many ways can you be? I thought there was. And, and he was like, what do you mean in which way? Like, I'm black. And she was like. Biologically? Well, what you mean? I'm confused. Yeah, she was like, well, the thing is, like, 
I, I don't get it. He was like, what is there to get? I'm black. What's there to get, babe? That was just another example to show that sometimes when you are half black and your skin color doesn't reflect necessarily like black or you don't have maybe different features to show that you're quote unquote black or mm-hmm. even just your hair texture. Like people would just assume like you're not black and fight you and literally want you to pull out your birth chart, your lineage, like your not family. your birth chart. Girl, please. Not they ask you for your astrology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want to connect the dots and the sun, the stars, and the moon to really <laughs> show how you could be black because they just the don't dots. believe it. They don't mm-hmm. believe it. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. was a situation that happened right in his face. Imagine social media. It gets uh, crazy. When people are like more removed and they feel even more emboldened to, you know, call you a liar or whatever it is. Girl, it's you. sad. Right. Wait, now I'm interested in Selena's birth chart. Now that we... <laughs> can I get her birth chart? Is that something that... <laughs> I know they're not gonna have it. I know they don't have. Not really trying to time. connect the stars, sun, and moon to figure out. <laughs> no, for real. I'm like, now I need to know what what hers all that information is. Oh my is. gosh, that's too funny. Allegedly, they do have it. Let me see what they talking about. Let's see. I'm done. Oh, an Aquarius rising. Wow, that's I can very see that. cool. I can definitely I can see, see that. that. Yeah, right. Where's her moon? Sagittarius moon, Aries sun. Okay. Aquarius yeah. rising, Venus in Pisces, Mercury in Taurus. Okay. With the retrograde, born born during a Mercury retro, retrograde. Me too, girl. Ugh. I feel you. It's hard out here. It's always us. hard. You know, let me tell you something. The moon's always in retrograde. <laughs> she, like, like Some, this something, bitch loves to retrograde. always in retrograde. If it's not the moon, the sun, the stars, like... It's the Earth. Pluto. Like it's, it's something. Saturn. Right. Something retrograde in 100%. We just came out of a Mercury retrograde. We never get out of a retrograde. And Mercury's Mm-mm. the biggest one. Mercury be in metro, like, uh, retrograde all the retrograde time. Retrograde all the time. She, and she be beating my ass when she in retrograde, too. Kat, do you know your sun moon rising? I do. My sun's a Scorpio. My moon is a Sag. And my rising is a Libra. Okay, if you know anything okay. about that, then you know that I'm all three of the last signs. It's, oh. It kind of it kind of goes in a row. People kind of have their spread around, but mine is legit like Libra, Scorpio, Sag. That's me. Oh shit! Oh, yours is it's always you season at the end of the year. It's, it's always you season, me, pretty much. Like yeah. I'm sorry yeah. for three months. <laughs> right? No, that's <laughs> right. It's you for three but months. Imagine those signs of retrograde, girl. I'm always going through it. Like imagine, have, like you know what I mean. Like imagine first it starts in Scorpio. No, first it starts in Libra. Libra. Yeah, in October. Yep. Yep. And then it's like, oh, we're not done yet because we have November and December. Like, it's really... Right. So I'm always in retrograde. So when, when people get a break, yeah, when people get a break, I'm going through it. So <laughs> that's what sucks, but you know. I definitely get that. And people hate a Scorpio. I don't, but I know people hate a Scorpio. <sighs> Let's talk about it, friend, because this is, <laughs> yeah. this is a topic in my personal life with my friends as well. We talk about this very often, especially around this time. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people that I know that are in Scorpio relationships or they keep having s- different cycles with Scorpio people. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I try to tell them it's because they're not listening and breaking those ties and those cycles. So they keep going back to the same sign, back to back to back. That is what happens, truly. Yep. And a lot of people are dealing with Scorpios right now because they are learning this lesson. They always get like a bad rep from the Scorpio. Yeah. Yeah. And that sucks because I'm a Scorpio. When I tell people that, they're like, what? I can't believe it. But also, <laughs> also, if you don't really know, <laughs> girl, like, if you don't really know about like astrology and stuff like that, you're just going to take people's sun signs and go with that all the time. And I keep telling people, we're not our sun signs. We're, we're our not. rising signs. We're our rising signs. And you give me Ugh. Libra energy so strong. See, I'm strongly. telling you, I've been giving Libra energy all the time. People's like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize you were a Scorpio. I was like, yeah. When we introduce ourselves to people, we introduce them as our rising signs. We should. We should. We really should. Oh, you know, and we sh- that should be our like, our thing that we say, but that is who we present as. We yeah. present as our rising signs. And then slowly yeah. as we grow up, we become our rising signs. Which right. Is funny oh my God. <laughs> that is so true for me. Yeah. I'm a cap rising. And like the older I've gotten, the more people are like, they're like, oh, you just seem so cold. You just seem <laughs> so whatever. And I'm like, I remember the first time I heard that was in college. And I was like, 
what? And I pretty much heard it since then. And I'm like, damn, Cap Rising has really... It'd be getting to you. It, right. It'd be like, driving shit. everything. Yeah. My taking me for all it's worth. But as a fellow hated sign, I'm also a Gemini sign. <laughs> I feel for you. People be like, oh, I would have never guessed you're a Gemini. I know. Girl, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you said that, the first thing I, that came to my mind right now is like, wait, isn't that one of the killer signs? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It literally is. <laughs> because I saw this chart yep. that had came out after, you know, every time that there's a psychological thriller a or a serial like, killer or something of the sort. Yeah. yeah. Or, or something movie or series come out. Um, everybody got to bring out the birth charts. Yep. 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 was on there. Virgos. It's, it's Virgo. That's most likely to be a serial killer. It's three signs. Virgo, Gemini, and Pisces. Yep. Those are the three most likely to be a serial killer. Yep. I am a Virgo moon as well and a oh, Gemini yeah. sun. So I'm like... And we all know that the moon means like the feelings. Mm-hmm. You can go through your feelings and so... Maybe y'all should not fuck with me, okay? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that's what it is. At all. Okay, don't fuck with me. But yeah, when you said I was like, oh, damn. Because I, I instantly thought of that birth child. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Because they came up yep. with all the serial killers and their signs and, like, who's most likely um, to be a serial killer. But honestly, that's another big debate right now because there's not a lot of big known serial killers anymore. Mm-hmm. No, I heard that debate. What was the reason? There was like, they had given a reason for it. Do you remember? Uh, it was something like the internet. Yeah. S- some people were saying that it's because a lot of people don't keep their doors unlocked anymore. Um, as a society, we're just not as trusting anymore. We trusting. don't have that community anymore where we yeah. want to leave our doors open and let people just walk in. <laughs> so I was like, wait. So that's that's one thing. And then another thing is just the fact that a lot of people are, well, back then, a, a lot of abortions weren't legalized. That, yep. Yeah, so that's a big one. And I understand people's like, well, that doesn't even make sense. It actually does make sense. It makes perfect sense. People are no longer giving birth to babies that they didn't want to give birth to mm-hmm. and therefore neglecting said child. Yeah, or ha- or harboring resentment. Yeah. Right, and therefore, you know, creating a less than emotionally sound child. Right. Yeah, but um, people are saying that basically America's trying to bring all the horrible things back because they took away abortion. It's illegal in certain states. And they also are, were overturning. Um, they're trying to illegalize gay marriage again. Yeah, so there's a couple things that they're doing right now that's trying to overturn a lot of stuff. I was like, oh, it's definitely giving very much Handmaid's Tale energy right now. Oh, my God. This fucking country. Ooh, it really stresses me out. It really stresses me out. I don't know. What would you, like, okay, so I'm a person that's into scenarios. What would you do if the world was starting to turn? Like, have you seen the show Handmaid's Tale? No, I can't watch it. I'm like, no. People have told me too much. I'm like, no, I don't think I can do that. I'm not in, no, no. Okay, so for you and other people that out there that don't know what The Hands Maze Tale is, it is set in a world where it's overrun by over-religious people that have their own rules. Um, and they basically want the world to be back to how it was, where women were in the household. They made you know, the food, they had the babies, they were just being wives. But also it takes it a step further because this is also set in a world where um, there weren't a lot of people having babies. Like a lot of people weren't able to have a child. And if you were able to have a child, then you were considered like blessed because you had a child and there weren't a lot of children in this world anymore. Mm, Okay. So that's the world that is set in. So, okay. So once they took all the people and made them underneath their rule, certain people got their job. And one of the jobs people didn't really want was a handmaid because Mm. as a handmaid, your job literally is to be a post in somebody's house and just be there to have to sleep with them and have a baby. Uh, Now, the thing... I did not know that. Yeah, the thing is, they turn it into like a quote-unquote ritual where the handmaid is placed on the bed and the wife of the household holds her arms and then the man has her legs and that's how they perform the ritual. And 
It's very sad, but it that's the hand. Sounds terrifying. It's it's terrifying. I'm gonna have to watch that. I've never, I didn't, nobody's ever like told me what it is. I'm gonna have to watch that for sure. And then they have like a person that's like the housekeeper and like they don't do any of the hands made stuff, but they're just like the one that walks around, um, make sure everything's as clean. They cook. And then, yeah, the wives and very dystopian. Yeah. Their wives and then the um, husbands are considered commanders. Yeah. Not masters. Mm-hmm. Anyways, what's the uh, what's the scenario? What scenario? You said if you were in, were you gonna say if oh, you were in? Sorry, okay, okay, sales? okay. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I forgot I was describing it. I thought I said it already. My bad, y'all. Okay, so if, if if we were to turn into Handmaid's Tale, what would you do? Would you be one of the rebel people out there in the rebel groups? And you're not a part of the society, or would you give into it? Because there are people that. They don't have that fight in them. They'd rather I just know. let go. They'd rather just go along with it because right. they're the, the people that have to follow the rules. You know what I mean? Right. Now, I like to believe that I am one of the people that would be a rebel. Okay. And even in day to day, I mean, you never really know because I'm not in that circumstance, mm-hmm. but even day to day, I am always like, whenever y'all are ready for the revolution, just let me know. Like, I've been telling I, you people know, that. Right. Like, whatever we're doing, we're doing it. Cause I'm not gonna hold you. How much can we march? I'm just how much out, can I'm we fucking march? There. No, I feel that. I'm just yeah, putting it I out really there. Do. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's like, we can change things with a march if people just start being violent. Let's be honest. A lot of these things that are happening at the marches that are violent don't even come from us, and that's a whole other thing we could we can get into. Hundred percent. Right. We not the ones starting that. We know who's starting it. Right. Pretending right. like it's us. Anyway. Right. <laughs> anyway, no. but I be trying to tell people like, how much can we march? Like, how much? Is, when did we try a different tactic? When, when are we just going to take, just go in there and, and do what we got to do? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So whenever y'all are ready to do that, let me know. I'm for I really sure do board. think that I am down for the cause, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, if we need mm. help starting the cause, I can help. But my thing is like, people that be helping, well, let me just put it this way. People that say that they want to help and be a part of the cause and be all for it and rallying, they might get a couple of photos at a at a march. They don't be about it when it's time. No, and no. so when those leaders call on them to come through, they don't be there. And then no. I'm just standing there. For example, <laughs> I don't know if you heard, but like I think it was last year, a bunch of people wanted to go storm up to uh, Area 51. Yes. And I the day that. came and went and nobody went. Then nobody fucking showed up. But there was a ah! whole meeting for it. There was everything. I remember. You remember? Yeah. yeah nobody I remember that. showed up. I think that was 2019. I want to say that was 2019, so, but yeah. For the leaders out there that are really about it, we will show up. 100%. I will say, I'm not a leader. That's not, I've never, I swear to God, like, I promise you. I'm telling you, leadership has never been my strong point. I grew up as an only child. I do things solo for the most part. But now, when we want to start the revolution, Sequoia is not going to start it, but Sequoia will be in it. She will be. I got you. I mean, as long as people show up, because there are times, there are times, like, we don't know how many times people really was going to, like, start the revolution. They were about it. They made signs and everything. They was ready. And then it was just them, and they got hemmed up, like... And now we don't know what happened oh, to them. Not him, duh. I'm Why? just saying, Who knows? like, let's just be real. Right. Like, once there's once the leader's name is known, like, highly probable no. you won't see them for a while, if ever oh, again. 100. Yeah. percent That's what scares me. That's the big thing. I'm like, yeah. mm, the leaders be having too much heat on them for me. You know, yeah. I love a a a strength in numbers type mm-hmm. of approach. Everybody's covered. We got masks on. I'm anonymous, but I'm here. <laughs> Something like that. But I'm here. Okay, and so that's what your that answer is. would be, so would you, so you would be a rebel. I can't you, go with it. You wouldn't want to be I can't a imagine handmaid. that. Like, nobody no, wants to be a handmaid, I'm not. of course, but like. <laughs> right. Right. Nobody wants to be a handmaid, a handmaid of course, but I, I like to believe that I, if there is a rebellious uh, segment, like a group of <laughs> Women, that's that's about that shit. We we own it. Okay. That's what it is. We out here. How about you? Um, I for sure I'm fighting people. I'm for sure fighting people. But you know, you know what it is? You know what it is though? I'm the type of person that knows that in order to really fight, you have to fight from the inside. 
Okay, okay. So you would go try to go along, quote unquote. So I sadly would be a handsmaid. But not for the sake of being a handsmaid. I would be a handsmaid to figure out how we getting out this hole. Like I, I'm plotting. I'm seeing the business plans. I'm connecting with people. I'm seeing who I could trust and not could trust. Like I'm playing that long game because I'm here to get all these people out. Like I'm not just here for me. And I'm not saying that the people that decide to go with the rebel groups are just here for them. I'm just saying that they see the they see the bigger picture, but don't realize that it's really not that close. It's, it's like when you're looking over the horizon at the sunset and you see the sun mad close to you on the water, but it's not that close. Like, it's mad far away. Like, you could chase the sun forever and not make it there because it's in space. So no matter what situation we in, if it happens to be Handmaid's Tale, The Hunger Games, oof, let it be Hunger Games. Oh, my gosh. I, I still haven't seen that either. I need to watch Girl, that. what's going on? Know. Like, I'm doing these references out to you, and you just don't get it. <laughs> no, I'll be like, no. Oh, no. I do know. I know about that one a little bit more than Handmaid's Tale. Just the premise. Girl, of it. yeah. Hunger Games. Have you watched Divergent? No. Oh, what's going on? All the all the references that I have for you to tell you that we're about to start this. Remember, like, I don't even know. Right. How am I supposed to? Like, how are you supposed to be ready and together? Like, if you don't know the references. Like, what's... You don't even know the references for the revolution. I'm just... <laughs> okay, so have you seen that? Have you seen... You Probably not, then. Have you seen the movie Red Dawn? The Red Dawn? Oh, I've never heard of that one. <laughs> Let me stop. Mm-mm. Okay, so you said... You know what, Cat said? I'm deep in the revolution. I'm just actually. saying, I'm like... If no matter what category, no matter if I have to volunteer as tribute, just know. Listen, okay, but if you saw the movie, you understood that she volunteered as tribute for her sister, not because she actually wanted to go, but her her sister got called up. Like, why you wouldn't let your daughter or your your brother, or sister, or whoever that's young, go into a war? Then you know they're not gonna make it out. No offense, but they're young. It's like you're not gonna send them right. to go. So hell yeah, I would volunteer as tribute. I got this, sis. Right. I, I volunteer as tribute, thing. but at the same time, just know that I'm plotting. <laughs> right, we still in this bitch I'm though. Plotting. We have a, a plan. Like, don't think I went yeah. willingly. <laughs> don't think that I, I went. I might have shown for... that I was going willingly, but I'm not going willingly. No, certainly I would never go willingly. No. But yeah, no, the revolution will be televised um, and hopefully also on my podcast. I'll have Cat back when the revolution starts um, and we can get it popping. But I'm going to close out this episode. Do you have anything else you want to say, Cat, before I do the outro? Continue walking in in your lane. I'm, I'm going to say that. And I'm, I'm going to let people say that. And <laughs> I'm going I'm to let people interpret that how they may because to some people it could be bad and some people it could be great. So which one is it for you too? I love my lane. I love my, so my lane, so our, our lanes are great. Feels good. For somebody like know, JLo but... and Haley, it's not. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. You all up. in somebody else's lane. <laughs> right. No, that was a good, that was a I good time. Back. Kat, thank you so much for coming yes, on the show. Thank you so much for having it me. It has been Fantastic having you. Can you let them know where they can find you? Any projects you want to talk about? Yes, you can find me on all socials at cat underscore claws, and that's cat with two T's. Um, you can also find my business page, Oso Afro at Oso Afro. That's O H S O A F R O. Um, we have a counter. Thanksgiving event that we're hosting in order to raise funds for the indigenous community. If you are in the Portland, Oregon area, please come out and support us. The indigenous community needs as much help as possible. And they're often looked down on, forgot about, and stomped on energy. You know what I mean? We need to help them. Um, So please come out. There's going to be games, food, music. It's going to be, in a sense, think about it as if you were getting together with your families at a cookout and hanging out and having fun. That's that's Damn, us. I wish I was important. Yeah, and there's gonna be giveaways. There's gonna be um yeah, we just gonna have a great time. There's gonna be gift bag giveaways. We we're gonna have so much fun. I'm excited. I can't wait. Tell you and your friends, tell everybody, um, for the BIPOC people out there in Portland that say that there is no black or brown people here. There is. You just not finding them, you don't know the areas to find them at, or maybe you, you really mm-hmm. just don't want. BIPOC people and you just want to be one of those people that just say you don't have none. <laughs> so mm, if you come to my event, <laughs> right. if you come to my event, that's for sure going to change and that's going to 
for sh- ever be since that moment a lie because you are gonna have BIPOC <laughs> friends and family. Yeah, you're gonna have people. So show up yeah. and show out. Right. Either show up or shut up. You know, I'm that's just what saying, it is. That should be the shirt that we yeah. wear. <laughs> right. show up or shut up but y'all know y'all can find me at BPLP pod across all social media platforms you can email me with guests you think should be on this podcast episode topics you think I should cover you can email me at blackpeopleloveparamore at gmail.com as for me personally you know you can find me on socials at Sequoia B. Holmes per usual the regular the regular and I think that's it I will see y'all next time bye <laughs>